suppose that I have um, assuming a, a block of wood and I put throw this block of wood um, onto a, a swimming pool okay that's a bit dim okay I'm going to throw this block of wood onto, onto a swimming pool now the wood floats the wood the wood floats now I want to find out I want to find out um, uh, how much of this wood how much of this wood is above is above the water surface okay I'll call this X Let's say I'll call this X so that's a uh, a bit tricky um, now let's see what information we can we can have um, so right let's say we know uh, the density of the water 1000 kilogram per meter cubed let's say we also know the density of the piece of wood that's still this piece of wood uh, let's let's just um, suppose that it is kg per meter, 800 kg per meter cube it has to be smaller than water otherwise it can't float okay um, and suppose that we are we are told that this is a rectangular block of wood rectangular um and that the okay and that the the height of this block of wood let's say we are given that this is one meter it's one meter okay um but we are not given the area all right so that makes it a little bit more tricky so find x that's the question find x what is x so let's let's get started. Now we, we need some ideas. So let's start uh, throwing some some ideas around. Okay. We start by why why does this thing floats? Okay, this this thing floats because because uh, of the upthrust from the water so that's up thrust pushing up that's it okay very good so this up thrust um, this up thrust we know the formula actually we know the formula for up thrust now the formula for up thrust is u is u equals to um, density of the water or whatever liquid rho times g acceleration due to gravity times h okay, h is the oh, oh no that's that's <laughs> that's pressure no uh, rho g times volume volume of the body now to be precise the volume here is the volume of the body inside the the, the, the water in this case so this is the v inside inside the water okay but not all of the wood is inside the water okay just uh, just this part of it below the surface so that anyway gives us the upthrust so if I want to make this quite precise let me let me just clarify this at this stage. So I'm just going to draw an imaginary a dotted line at the level at, 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 of the water surface and remind ourselves that the V here uh, is for the part that is submerged into 
the water. Okay. Okay. Right. So there we are. Now, the other things that we should think about is um, is why why is this thing floating? Why doesn't it sink? Okay. We say that because it's less dense. But in terms of the forces, it must be because the up thrust is enough to balance the weight. So we have this idea of the weight of the the weight of the wood. The weight of the wood. Okay, we know that uh, the weight of the wood is equal to mass times g. It's equal to mg mass times acceleration due to gravity. And for it to float, this must be equal to this must be equal to the up thrust. So that up thrust balances the weight uh, that pulls it down into the water. Okay, so we have this connection there. Okay. So so right. So let's try uh, putting these together and see whether it leads us anywhere. Let me uh, equate those two. All right. We are saying that m g is equal to rho g h. Right. So m g is equal to rho g uh, rho g v sorry so this part um, we find that these two cancel okay now we have to be a bit careful here this is going to get a little confusing because uh we have actually two densities of the wood and of the water we have the mass uh mass this mass of the wood not not of the water in this uh not of the water and this not 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 yet so this is the volume uh of the water that we are talking about okay so I'm putting some subscripts to, to just to make sure that we know what we are talking about for the water um, I'm going to call the density rho uh, w for water for the density of wood I call it rho w for wood that is a they both starts with w Right, I'm going to call this row 1 for water and row 2 for the wood. Okay, so my volume, uh, okay, this part which is under the water surface, I'll call it row uh, V1. Okay, I'll call it V1. But the, for the whole full volume of the wood, I'll call it V2. Okay, so for the mass right now, uh, I'm just going to talk about the mass of the wood. So this is the mass of the wood. Um, that we're talking about the weight of the wood. And rho here comes from the water, right? Up thrust from the water. So this is the weight of the water. This is the volume uh, inside the water. Okay, so density. The water volume in the water right the volume of the wood inside the water m2 is the mass of the of the wood now what we have here is an interesting uh, it tells us something the mass of the the whole piece of wood is equal to the density of water times the volume under the water or of the wood that is under the water in other words this volume un, uh, of the wood under the water is actually the volume of water that is pushed aside by the wood so this is actually the volume of the water that is displaced so the v1 v1 here is the displaced 
for the displaced water, the water that is pushed aside by the wood. Displaced water. So if I uh, take the displaced water, multiply by the water density, I get the mass of the water displaced. Okay, so I get the, this is the mass of the water that is displaced, which I can call M1. Okay, M1 for the water. Uh, the, I, I'm using 1 to refer to water, right? So this is the mass of the water displaced. Alright, so for that too. Now, so, um, so the mass of the wood, this is the mass of the wood, right? This is for the wood. Turns out to be the mass of the whole piece of wood, both below and above the water, turns out to be equal to the mass of the water that is displaced. So if the mass are equal, then uh, since, since both are on Earth, their weights are also equal. In other words, we have an important result here. Okay, um, The weight... Let me write down this important result first. We are still not, not close to finding finding our answer for x yet, but along the way, we've just discovered an important result. Okay, let me write this out. Uh, at least um, we found something that might be useful. This result says that the weights the weights of a floating a floating uh, body. So here is the wood, right? But I call it floating body because it should also work for for uh, another thing uh, like plastic or or anything that can float. So weight of a floating body is equal to the weight of the liquid. Okay, instead of water, I call it liquid because even if it's oil or alcohol or some other liquid, it should work. So the weight of a floating body is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. Okay. By displaced here, all right, displaced just means the part, the part that gets pushed aside uh, by the volume of the wood. Uh, the, 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 that means the volume of the wood that is, or the body that is under the water. Right. The liquid volume, of the, uh, weight of the liquid displaced. All right, it's the weight of the volume of the liquid. Okay, uh, that get pushed aside by the by the body. Okay, so we have a, this this result here. Now this is an, an important result. It actually has a proper a proper name. The name. The name of this is called the law of flotation. Flotation. Okay. Uh, okay. I hope I got this spelling right. Flotation. Okay. Now coming back to our original problem, I wanted to find how much of the wood is above the water. So what can we do about this now? Can I make use of the law of flotation, our newly discovered law? Let's try. Let's try. So I'm going to clear this off. Right. So we're going to start again. With our new file law. Um,
So we know that the weight of the wood must be the same as the weight of the liquid displaced. Fine. So the weight weight of the wood plus weight of the water displaced. Now, since we have no better idea, I'm going to just try and put in numbers from here uh, to calculate each of this and see whether it leads us anywhere. So here's what I'm going to do. If I want to find the weight of the wood, so from these numbers, how can I do it? I would take the volume of the wood, okay, I would multiply by its density. So density of the wood. Okay, I'm going to use the symbols. Um, instead of writing down the actual number, I'm, I'm going to use the symbol row 2. Okay, it's, it's, it's uh, often uh, useful because maybe I can find that I can simplify uh, the expression afterwards with some algebra and that saves, that might save some calculation. So the weight of the wood, I would take uh, the density times times um, the volume. Okay. Now, but uh, that gives me the mass, so I should really multiply by, by g, the acceleration of gravity. But since uh, they are uh, they are both on on Earth, the same weight must mean the same mass. So I'm just going to use the mass. Okay. Um, so that's the mass of the wood, and must be equal to the, to the mass of the water displaced. So the mass of the water displaced will be v1, uh, which is the volume of the water displaced right, by the wood that pushes into the water times it, the water density. Okay, so that's what I have in terms of, of the numbers that are that are given. Um, so well, actually, actually v2 and v1 were not given. Uh, directly. So what I like to do is uh, think about the what we need to find, think about x and see if we can relate um, v1, v2, we can relate any of these to x. So x, x is about this part, right, which is uh, the part of the wood that is above the water. Now if I want to try and relate this to v1 and v2, um, x is just one, uh, about one side of the wood. So to relate to a volume, I must know the area of, um, of the other side of the wood. So let's say the area is A. Okay, let's say the area of the base of the wood is A. So in that case, can I write the volume in terms of A and x? Let's start with the v2. v2. Now V2 is equal to A, the base area times the height, which is 1. So A times 1. One meter. So OK, that, that's uh, V2. And V1, what is V1? V, V1 is the part that is under the water surface. So actually, um, Right, we can find if we take the base times the height. In this case, this is the height. But actually, we don't know what this is because we don't know x. But we can express it in terms of x because the full height of the wood is 1. Okay, we know that the full height of the wood is 1. So 1 minus x would give the depth below the water. Okay, so I would take a times 1 minus x. So ah, I finally have an equation for x, and I also notice that I have a on both sides. So I can divide both sides by a, 
and that that is very lucky because we uh, we actually don't know a okay i just let the base area be a so we don't don't know the number so now that i can cancel it i don't have to worry about this anymore so if, if i look at this equation um okay x i don't know is what i want to find we uh, we know we know row one row one is water density 1000 we know row two 800 so that is very good i can now calculate the x so let me do some rearranging i shall okay i can rearrange this to make x the subject so let me divide both sides by row one okay, row two over row one on the left and then i have one minus x on the right and then i want to solve for x okay continue working up here so i'll um i'll move x x to the left and i'll move row two over row one to the right so x is equal to one minus row two over row one finally i can put in the values and row two is 800 row one is 1000 800 over 1000 and therefore the answer is 0 0.2 now x is a length so we have been using meters so the unit is meters so now we have found our answer 0 0.2 meters of the wood is above the surface of the water